when can college soccer coaches contact you? There's so many rules, college soccer guy. How do I know when they can contact me? So I'm really glad you brought this up because I'm going to break the barrier of what the notion is of when they can actually speak to you because most of you have it wrong. Because most of you are going to go, hey, college soccer guy, college coaches are not allowed to talk to me until I'm a junior in high school. And because of that, I'm not going to do any of the recruiting process until I'm a junior. And then you're going to be screwed. And then it's going to be really difficult for you to play college soccer at a relatively competitive level. So here are the exact rules. Okay. Starting the moment you're born. Technically speaking, which is a little bit extreme, you could talk to Division Three college soccer schools and NAI schools. So let's just fast forward. You're in eighth grade, which is kind of when this would, this is when it would be relevant. You can email and have full-on conversations with Division Three college soccer schools and NAI schools. Now, most of you are like, well, I'm not going to play Division Three, so I won't reach out to them. Also, a very bad decision. So let me tell you why. First of all, if you are aspiring to play at the highest levels of college soccer and you're not playing at a high level club team the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you get the interest of many colleges and then eventually leverage those to the other colleges and say look i'm not playing at a high level club team but i have these college soccer teams interested in me i live far away i can't afford xyz therefore i think we should still have a conversation we would phrase it a little bit differently but that's the purpose number two division three and nai schools know that division one schools cannot talk to you or in division two schools until june 15th of your going into your junior year so the end of your sophomore year they know that so they're like this is the only moment during the recruiting process where we finally are wanted where we're better than division one otherwise every single kid including myself did not grow up dreaming to play division three soccer we dreamt of playing chelsea manchester united and maybe division one called soccer and maybe then to go pro after that so this is a very it's a special opportunity because Division three coaches know that they're the only ones that can talk to you. So what I tell my students who really want to play college soccer is to start with the lower level Division three schools, work their way up. But specifically, if you're a good soccer player, you're playing East Nell, MLS Next at 13, 14, 15 years old, please email the Division three schools at the top academic level. Those schools are equally as competitive as Division ones, and I can tell you that right now. I'm filming this in June. When the kids are getting recruited by those top schools they're emailing my students are going we will make our final decisions for the class of 2020 in this case it'd be 2024 in august so that's your junior year going into your senior the before your ju your senior year starts august 2024 how do you think they make a decision that early they've gotten to know you for a number of months years beforehand so please email the division three schools the moment you have any video email to them for a couple of reasons one you can email to them and go what level do you believe i can play based off of this video on my level oh my gosh what if they tell you something really valuable like you need to work on these things otherwise you'll never play college soccer great now you have time to work on those things you've maybe you haven't even lost the interest of that division three school because they'll be impressed that you're asking questions you'll go and improve they'll see how much you improve they'll go i love a character like this want me on my team or if you you're not going to lose them, but pretend you did. Great, you lost it with a Division three school you don't care about. Now you can work your way to the Division one schools with a better video with more information. I also want to be that platform for you. I want you to send me your crappy videos first before you send it out to college coaches because first impressions do make a difference. But knowing that you're going to improve over time goes a long way for college coaches as well. So when can you reach out to them? Technically, it's June 15th of your sophomore year is when Division two and Division ones can reach out to you. But you also didn't factor this which is Division three, Division two, and Division one schools are taking notes on their best kids starting freshman year, okay? And for girls, it's eighth grade. That's how early they take their notes because girls are committing their sophomore year. Just the other day, we interviewed a student, a girl soccer player who goes to Pepperdine. I grew up in Malibu. Tim Ward's the head coach there. He taught me how to play soccer, so I've known him since I was five years old. I've coached his daughters since then. He is recruiting and committing girls their sophomore years of high school, which means they've known about them since eighth grade, ninth grade. So of course, it's a huge way to get recruited eighth grade, ninth grade year, which also means if eighth grade, ninth grade year, you're getting recruited to play college soccer, specifically as a girl, that means seventh, eighth, sixth, seventh grade, you need to be playing at a very high level of competitive soccer. So that way when you hit ninth grade, you're playing ECNL, Girls Lead Academy, DPL is a little bit lower and you have a chance to play college soccer. So if you're a mom or dad listening to this and I want to give my kids the best chance, gradually as a young, as a parent with a young child, gradually push them towards competitive soccer. And if they fall in love with it, push them some more. When I say push, gently guide them 
into that direction. If they don't love it, then they should stop, obviously. But if you're like, look, my kid loves it. They don't know the difference between all these different levels. How could they? They're a child. But as an adult, it's your job to be educated on these things, which is what I'm here to do. And my mom and my dad didn't know a gosh darn thing. My dad's a surfer. My mom's a dancer. They never played soccer in their life. Yet we had to navigate this whole process. And I got so frustrated with it that here I am now telling you about it because I got, you know, I got, I should have been at a higher level. I should have done things more, more than I could have. And I did pretty damn good. I played JV soccer as a junior in high school. All of a sudden was playing Division One on a full ride scholarship. So I want you guys to have the education you need. Now, let's say you've taken, you've listened to me and you're like, college soccer, we get it. We believe you. You're taking notes. You're like, my student or me, if I'm the student listening, I'm starting to contact schools, eighth grade, ninth grade year. What are you going to say? You're like, what do I say to them? Oh my gosh, it's so crazy. I want you to say to them, here's a highlight video. So don't send them just information, video. You got to have video. So start recording video right away. Make a highlight video. I don't care if it's five seconds long. Have something. Five seconds goes a long way in this recruiting world. So please have like 10 clips, which adds up to about a minute. And that would be lovely, okay? That would be so huge for you as you message these coaches. Go to one or two ID camps. Get a gauge of what level you are, what level they think you are, what you want to improve on. And more, most importantly, which is I care about the most, you're developing a relationship with these coaches. If they know you at 14, they see you develop at 16, go, wow, look at the improvement they've had. I bet you when they're a freshman in college, by the time they're a junior, they're going to be a baller. They should be on my team. So that's how college coaches are obviously thinking. They're thinking long term and they know that you're not college level at 12, 15 years old or 12 years old. They know that you have to develop, but they're trying to look at you and go, do I think this person can develop into a college soccer player that's going to help me keep my job? And at the end of the day, that's what college coaches need to do. They need to win soccer games to keep their jobs that already under the pay the heck out of them. So now you're like, Zev, college soccer guy. I agree with you. I understand what you're saying. This is when they can contact me. I'm going to start taking action. Now, the beauty is you have this June 15th date, which is when Division II schools and Division I schools can reach out to you. Less than 2% of kids get a call on June 15th. Now, as it happens, my students get phone calls because we work really hard with them starting their freshman, eighth grade and freshman year. So our students do get phone calls on June 15th, but not everybody does. And I never did. And I'm here to work with players that are not going to get calls on June 15th. So when that occurs and you're not getting calls on june 15th that means you have a lot of work to do but it doesn't mean you're out for the count it just means we have to be aggressive and progressive and working forward and one of the ways i want us to do that is sending and creating this email template that's very specific to your age and your situation and what level you're playing and exactly where you are which is why i get really specific with the way I have my students write their email templates. We'll say things like, if you're a freshman, for example, dear coach, I understand that I am in the class of so-and-so and you cannot respond to me. However, I wanted to attach some video with my schedule and I look forward to staying in touch with you in the future. Boom, conversation, not interrupting. They're staying in touch. Can you send in every touch video every three months, every, every weekend, which would be extreme. So I would say like once a month for a year. Oh my gosh, you don't think that college coach is going to remember your name? Of course they are. And making it every touch video is not that difficult. You should be watching your games back anyways. You make a note of your moments. You put together the touches. If you need help editing-wise, I have services for that. And then we can just sort you out. You should be doing that. That is very easy. And in today's world, you could outsource that to anybody on Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R, and then you can just tell them to do it for you. There's no reason not to have every touch videos that you're sending out to these college coaches all the freaking time now you want to send good games so maybe you wait but when you have a good game push it out your freshman eighth grade and freshman year go to these id camps get to know the coaches college coaches which is why i disagree will even tell you you don't need to start the process until you're a sophomore that's for the good players okay that's for the players that are ballers at 14 15 years old and the play the coaches don't care they don't care which if they recruit you or the baller they just want the good player so that's not their problem if you were like me who were so passionate and really wanted to play college soccer, but nobody believed you, nobody thought you could make it. You need to do everything that you're working hard on the field, you need to do it off the field, writing the emails, email videos, etc. So, to answer the bottom line question, when can they contact you? Officially speaking, Division II and Division I schools cannot contact you until June 15th. You can contact them, however, starting when you're born, which would be a little extreme. So say you start in eighth grade, you're going to send them updated highlight videos, follow them on Instagram, make your own Instagram account, make your Twitter account, start posting and tagging them in that information, follow them as well. And then over time, you're going to go to their games in the fall. 
You're going to schedule times to see them at ID camps. You're going to meet them. They're going to get to know your face. They're going to get to know your family. And that's really how you have the best chance of playing college soccer. And even if that school who you've worked so hard with, say Pepperdine, you have gone to every ID camp since I was eight years old. And the coach goes, look, we just don't think you're the level. You don't think that coach is going to reference you to some other school? Of course, they've known you since you were a child. So that would be awesome. So please, I, I want to say start the recruiting process early. Yes, it's expensive. So if you're like, I don't want to start it so early because it's so expensive, then be wise about it. Send video. That may cost zero dollars. Making a video nowadays costs no money or twenty dollars. There's no finances now is not the reason you're not going to play college soccer alone. Now, it definitely plays a role, okay, for sure. It costs money to go to college. ECNL, MLS Next, these are travel, they're expensive. But to play college soccer, you can use just video and email templates alone, not even go to ID camp, to play college soccer at lower end Division three and NAI schools. If you want to play at the top level schools, money is going to be involved. That is the unfortunate part of it. My job is to make sure you make the most of your money spent so that way you find the right school for you and you're happy. Thank you so much for listening. I'm the Call Soccer Guy. If you want more help, call me. Links in the bio.